I'm gonna do it one more time really quickly and show you the steps all at once, okay? I created a new folder uh, where I wanted to store it. When I first opened up Premiere Pro, it asked me where I wanted to store it and which folder. So I'm gonna store it under demo. I'm gonna call this green screen test two. Once I clicked on that, I had the option between choosing between um, which format I wanted to make the video uh, export into or what formats it would be accepting. So I selected AVC HD 1080p 30 frames per second because that matched my footage. I could have also used 720p if I wanted to uh, work with smaller footage if that's what I had. So I'm going to click on AVC HD 1080p 30. I'm going to change the sequence name to uh, green screen test 2. I'm going to click OK. Welcome to Pyramid Pro. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to have uh, two I'm going to have one image and one video that I want to work with and I'm, I'm an organized guy so I'm going to I'm going to create a project bin here called video. I'm going to right click again and choose new bin. I'm going to create another one here called photo. I've downloaded all my footage. I have everything that I need to do my green screen and uh, my video. So I'm going to go into my finder and I'm going to pull in this video. I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to pull in this image and I'm going to drop that in here. Okay, so now we have two clips. I double click on the video clip to start because that's the thing I want to actually get my green screen footage on. And when I double click on it, I've got this guy here and I just want a small section of him speaking. So I'm gonna click I after I found the spot that I want it to start. And then I'm gonna choose the spot that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with and I'm finished with. I'm gonna hit O. And now it's only selected that small part of the clip. I'm gonna click and drag this uh, picture down here onto the timeline. I'm gonna put it on video track two because I'm gonna put that picture below it once I'm happy with it. There's my clip. And now I need to apply the ultra key chroma key effect on it. So I go over into my effects browser over here on the left hand side. I click ultra, I type ultra. And then I'm gonna click and drag this clip onto, or this, uh, um, this effect, I'm gonna click and drag it onto the video clip that I just put on the timeline. When I zoom in down here, I can see it a little better. And you'll notice that when I play it back on this timeline, it, show, it shows in the program window over here. But I haven't actually done anything. I've only dragged this ultra key over here, but it doesn't look like it's done anything. So when I click on it, if I wish to have, uh, affect any sort of change, I have to click on Effect Controls. The first thing I need to do under this ultra key setting that's here is I need to select the color I wish to remove. And so when you do your green screen, you might not have a nice even screen like this. You might have a little bit of a dark patch. Go for the slightly darker patch that you wish to remove. So click here, and I'm going to click down here in this corner. And that's a really good key, actually. You'll see that um, the person stands out really well from the background, but we're not 100% certain if they're OK or not. Um, often, if, if your key is not ideal, you'll, when you play it back, you'll see a little shimmering effect. We don't want that. So we go to the output option here, and we select alpha channel. And we actually have a perfect key on our hands here. That's, that's wonderful. So um, what you would do then in the off chance that you didn't have a, a good key, let's say I grab this bright area here, and you'll see that uh, you've got this fall off here where it gets a little bit darker. That means that it's not actually uh, identifying the, that particular shade as the green that it needs to be removed. So we need to increase the tolerance and the amount of different uh, green that it will take in. And so we do that under matte generation. We click on matte generation, and we go to pedestal, and we crank that up a bit until it starts getting blacker and blacker until it's a solid black. Once it's like that, you've got a nice crisp image on the outside, and it's a solid black background, and your subject is pure white, now you're, now you're off to the races. So now we're done that, we're going to change alpha channel back to composite, we're going to see that person nicely separated from the background, and now I'm going to drag in my, my, my photo, I'm going to drag that photo in, I'm going to put them right there on video track one, which will be behind the person. Now if I want to uh, change the size of this photo and I want to reposition this person here, all I have to do is click on the clip I wish to work with, and then I can uh, work with some of the effects in the under motion settings. So let's start with making this photo a little smaller. I click on the photo that I wish to work with. And I go to motion. I change the scale so that it fills the screen. And if I wish to affect this gentleman to make him a little bit smaller, maybe move him to the right, I click on here, click on his video clip. I go to motion. I scale him down just a smidge if I wish, and I can move him over here and drop him down a little bit like this. And there we go. I'm happy with that clip. I'm happy the way it works, but I find that when I play it back, the grumpy cat disappears after a couple of seconds. That's not what I want. I want to have this go all the way to the end of the clip like that. He's kind of leaning outside the frame there a little bit. I'm going to reposition him slightly uh, like this. Okay, great. 
Now that I've done that, I need to export my clip. So to do that, I'm gonna use Adobe Media Encoder. I'm gonna do that process. I go to File, Export, Media. And there's some settings I need to confirm. First things first, I'm gonna set my format to H.264. I'm going to set my output name to the file name that I wish to have created under my and specify which folder I'd like it stored in. So I put it in the same folder. I'm calling it green screen test two. Next, I'm gonna choose um, the frame size and make sure that it's set to 1920 by 1080. Make sure it matches your source footage. And then you come down further and you wanna make sure that your bitrate encoding is set to something decent. If you want it to encode fast, I recommend using CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. Set that to a value of about nine. And, uh, and then once you're happy with all those settings, you click Q. That will open up Adobe Media Encoder and it will add it to your queue to be exported. Here you can make some last minute changes if you wanna change the preset or the format or the output file. And we're happy with the way it looks. So I'm gonna hit this play button and that's gonna render through that queue really quickly. Now well, somewhat quickly. Now that's, now that's finished, we get a nice happy sound. I'm gonna right click on this uh, gray area here and I'm gonna select reveal output file. Now we'll jump to the section where I've had it stored. It jumps to, jumps to green screen test number two. I double click on that uh, just to preview my footage, make sure it's okay. And it looks pretty good. Different sexes, different ages, and different size. Poo gecko are a really interesting bird because man studies birds. Okay, so now that we're done that, we're going to close this out. We're going to save our project and we're done. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, drop by the Lions New Media Center. I'd be happy to help. Thanks. Bye.